Hello and welcome to this tutorial on finally how to draw a space galaxy from scratch. Now this is uh, something to what we will end up with if I just zoom in here. It's a star map, space map, whatever you want to call it with space lanes and names of countries, uh, planets, um, kingdoms demarcated and all of it is something that you can turn on, off, and reveal as you need to or don't need to as the case might be. So it's entirely up to you how you want to put this thing together. But ultimately, we're going to try and end up with something like this. And it's going to take around about two to two and a half hours to do this because there's certain processes which I cannot handle being automated. So I do them by hand. You can, of course, automate them if you like. So with that as our end goal in mind, the very first thing we need to do is we need to create a new template, 1000 by 1000 by 100 pixels uh, is absolutely fine. Create a new layer, select our brush tool, choose black and white, our brush should be black. We're working in negatives here. Choose a brush size that's not too big or not too small. I'm using my square brackets to increase or decrease the size of my brush here. Well, let's make it about that big. And then all I'm going to do is by, oops, completely forget that your opacity should be set to 100%. Here, you don't want to uh, use layering. So you're going to then spread it out into a very rough cross. Then halve your brush size. I'm on 80 at the moment. So I'm going to drop down to about 40. And I'm going to do another cross here. And another cross there. And then with this brush size, I'm going to do a little bit of a thing out there. Some of you already know what we're going to be doing. What we are doing, for those of you that don't know, is we are creating a star. So star maps obviously need to have stars in them. Uh, so star maps obviously need to have stars in them. And this is the way that I know how to do it properly and effectively. So I've drawn lines roughly in between my in-betweens to create that shape. I'm then going to go filter, I'm going to go blur, I'm going to use Gaussian blur, and I'm going to pump that up until we get something, something like that. I think that'll work. If I just push it in a different, too far, you'll see what happens. You know what, there's this funny branch thing that's happening here, so I'm going to cancel that quickly, and I'm just going to put in some extra tendrils there, and there, and there, and there. And that's the beauty of Photoshop is that you're not committed um, to anything that you don't like. So I'm just going to do some of that. And then I'm going to go back filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now I can push it to something like that. And that looks more star like to me. That's at 16.8, but it really depends on your personal preference. Now I'm going to go edit. Am I going to go edit? Yes, I'm going to go edit. And I'm going to say define brush preset, define brush preset. And I'm going to call this um, tut001 underscore star. That's because I'm old and I believe in underscore. So now you can see it's created a star brush for us. But it's in black and white, isn't it? So that's all that we need. We can now close that. We don't have to save it. It's a waste of time. Now we're going to create our star map. Now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to try and create a galaxy based on Braxia. Braxia, of course, is the homeworld uh, that I built for my fantasy setting. So I'm going to try and do the same thing in a galactic environment. And that's just me uh, basically just liking the world that I've created and wanting to see it go on and on and on. So why am I opening up this map, you might ask? Well, we're going to come back to that a little bit later on. For now, all we're going to do is create a new layer. We're going to call this black space. Remember to always name your layers, and we're simply going to fill it up with black. Now, this map, of course, of Braxia is spectacularly huge. It's taking up 564 megs just to hold it in memory, and that's going to get worse as we add layers and things onto it. But you'll see what I'm doing in a little bit. So now we bring back this uh, map of Braxia to duplicate it because 
of reasons. I'm going to put that on top. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just going to create a new layer. And onto that layer, I'm going to select a color, make it red, it doesn't really matter, brush tool. And if you notice in the brush tool, your star that you created is now here at roughly the size that you created it. So that thousand by thousand squares gives us this because we didn't fill up the, the corners, so it's 800 base size. Now that's what we want, that little star there. I'm not going to use that for this particular um, action now. I'm going to use a circle. 800 is fine for the scale that I'm working at. So what I'm going to do now is now I'm just very quickly going to draw over this map of Braxit. Now, why am I doing that? So the big challenge, we know that this is a challenge with running a space campaign, and especially a space campaign that um, you have made a homebrew campaign, as they call it. Um, the biggest challenge that we have is that players are unfamiliar with our space. So if you've been playing in a fantasy world for an extended period of time, let's say a campaign, and your guys have really gotten used to the world that they're in, when you shift over to doing a sci-fi campaign, this is a trick that I use, is if you're not using a predetermined thing like Battlestar Galactica or Babylon 5 or Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever your flavor is of sci-fi, if you're not doing that, if you are creating your own, just use your fantasy map that you've beautifully drawn using the other tutorials. Use that instead to create your map. So that's what I'm doing. I'm basically just outlining very roughly the shape of, of Braxia, the campaign world that I've created and that my players have played in for years now. So they are familiar with this space. Now, it might seem like a bit of a cheat that I'm not starting from grassroots all the way up and designing my own. And if you are doing that, that's absolutely fantastic. You would still do this. You need to define areas on the galactic map where you're going to have civilizations and where you're not going to have civilizations. And I find that by doing this, it helps uh, quite a big deal uh, to do that. So there's roughly Braxia. I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to bury it underneath there. So that is roughly the distribution of stars that I'm going to have. And this becomes very, very important. So now I'm going to go here and I'm going to make the opacity, let's say like 20, 12%, really doesn't matter. I'm now going to select my brush tool, select that star that we made. I'm going to slap it down there. It's not very impressive, is it? Because I put it on the wrong layer, that's why. So I'm going to make a new layer, slap down the star, and there we go. But now that's a very big star, and it doesn't look very good at all. So now here is where defining your areas has become so important, and here is where the laborious part starts. So now I'm only zoomed in 25%. I'm working on a massive canvas. I'll give you those dimensions right now. Image size is 16,000 pixels by 11,000 pixels at 300 DPI, or pix um, pixels per inch, sorry, P, uh, pixels per inch, yeah, uh, PPI. So that's what I'm working at. It's a massive image, 564 megs in size, but I want this printed out exactly how I had my Braxia map printed out, I want this one printed out as well. And so what we're going to do is this is not conducive. A star of that scale on this map is not conducive. We want our stars, and I'm using the square brackets here, the left square bracket, to shrink my brush down to about that size. Do you see how small it is? But when I zoom in to 100%, that's how big the star is. So I might take it down a notch or two further. Now this is where it gets laborious and there is no way of doing this in a nice and easy way. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to sit on about 50% size and I'm going to start just single clicking for now, single clicking the big star systems. So these are randomly placed stars where you go, well, if this is an expansionist territory that must have expanded from a home star somewhere, and they probably, the extent of their space where they can patrol probably extends around the star at the very edge and no further. Um, so it really is just a case of saying, okay, well, how do we make, so there's a double star. Um, and and I, I know my map 
of Braxia very well. This is the territory where the barbarians are normally hiding out in. This is the territory where the gnomes are hiding out in. So I'm going to give them an interesting little cluster of stars and then nothing else because of perhaps the dangerous experiments they've been conducting. Now, that's the part that I particularly love about space, is that unless you are setting it in a world that people know about or in a, in a universe that people know about, you are free to do as you choose. Now, I've done tutorials on how to create interesting aliens. Um, and oh, let's do a line there, why not? And that's for me the exciting part because I'm defining things that have never existed before and that could have the same uniqueness as a Klingon or a Cylon. Those are, are iconic kind of characters that were created by somebody somehow and maybe this is the approach they took. So I'm just, just going around... This is Sanctuary, of course, where the Druids stay. I know there's one major city there. And then, of course, there's this cluster of stars that they've created the safe haven in. So I'm going to do that there. I'm going to come down here to the elves. Now, what I'm going to be doing, and if you want me to, please, please put comments down uh, below so that I can see uh, that you do want them, is I want to run a series of videos on how to translate the characters, the races from Braxia into races that are alien in origin. So the elves of Athain Vasul, for example. If I want my players to play in my sci-fi game and I don't want them to feel alienated, well, then I need to somehow give them a sense of familiarity. So as I come down here to the Graith, uh, the Graith are a very militant uh, species within Braxia, that uh, my players are just encountering now. If I want to translate them into aliens, how do I go about doing that? And how do I go about doing it in such a way that it still feels true to the essence of what they were in the original setting, but that it's different enough that they go, oh, these are just Graith, for example. And then after a moment's notice, they go, actually, these are Graith on steroids. That's scary. How do we accommodate? How do we, how do we adapt to this new discovery? So that's something to, to, to think about. And if you do want to see that video, let me know. Uh, now the dwarves, they've got their little triumvirate circle, but I don't think that that's very impressive in a galaxy this big. So I'm just going to do that. There is nothing down here on the actual fantasy map, but all this black stuff is literally the space between stars. So I have got to be cognizant of the fact that these are the empire borders and that those empires would most definitely have had a reason for for saying that this is this is our space this is where we are and i'm just going to pop down some here all right so oh, some overlapping stars there you don't want to have too many because all of these big ones you're also going to have to name. Uh, they're big enough that they would warrant some kind of naming convention at the very least. Here we are in Drakenmore, eight Dark Dukes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Eight Dark Dukes, the Lost Island out there. Maybe that's a stellar nursery for some race that's yet to be determined. This is the Cathar, the traders in my world, the cat folk. Now, a space map is, generally speaking, quite a boring map because, well, let's be honest, it's just mostly space. Okay, so there we go. There's our star map. If I look at the distribution of stars there, that uh, looks kind of nice. And if you need help imagining how that would look, squint your eyes a little bit so that the white dots really punch out. And we get a sense of some big open spaces and the fact that we've forgotten about the poor old tieflings down here. I'm just going to drop in some there. I'm worried that this is a very big, empty, expansive space. Um, it could make for interesting storytelling, but that's the part that players zip through. Okay, so that is our big stars. Now, we're going to call that Homeworlds. Next, 
we're going to call stars. Now these are the part, this is the part where I will speed up for your benefit, but this is the part that takes a very long time and you can automate it and make brush strokes and that sort of thing that will do it. But basically now is where you go, okay, cool. These are the stars that have got nothing really to do with the world. I just want to zoom out and check that they are small enough that they're reading as separate. Yes, they are, good. These are the little clusters of stars that maybe have a planet or a side mission or a side quest on and that really just fill up the space between the stars. And you can, you can do whatever you like in terms of patterns and arrangements. Try and keep it random to a certain degree. Um, if, you, if you want to be fancy and try and make them make shapes so that the players can give them constellation names, that's cool too. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's up to you how much time you want to spend. So just as I hand draw all my trees uh, on my fantasy maps, I like to hand position all my little stars and I will pop a few into the dark territory now the reason for that is because this is the unclaimed space now just because it's unclaimed by an empire doesn't mean that there aren't any stars out there it could mean that that's the star that no one goes to because it's full of cannibals or because <laughs> it's got a big gravitational well around it um, it is an evil space it's traditionally cursed it's off limits by all of the empires for some reason. Um, so that's where you can really have fun. And space is about imagination. It's about the unknown. So on a fantasy map, it's about seeing, oh, well, there's a forest there and there's a mountain range there. So there might be something in that mountain range. Space is the exact opposite. Space is about seeing the dark, the blackness, and saying, what's at that star there? That little star all on its own. What is out there? And why is no one seeking it? Why has no one got there? Uh, and it's interesting questions like that that lead to, to some very, very cool side quests and the ability to make cool side quests, I think. All right. So I'm going to go quiet now. As for the next 45 minutes, I populate this map with stars. So now I've done that, control minus to zoom out. There is our star field and it's not looking too bad. If we hide our layout layer, that's kind of the star clusters that we're getting. Maybe a little bit too erratic depending on your taste, but to me that looks like a fair distribution of a rather messy square galaxy type of space. So. Again, it really de depends on what shape you want to draw it in. You could make it spirals. You could do whatever you choose to do. Now we're going to make the smaller stars. So that means we're going to make our brush even smaller and we're going to draw 20 million stars. No, we're not. <laughs> we are going to duplicate our uh, layer of stars. We're going to call it stars small. And then all we're going to do is we are going to shrink them down. So left click and drag holding the shift button at the same time until we get to a star field that we feel is appropriate. Now, um, I uh, then click on accept that size. Yes, I do. All right, the transformation process may take some time as this image is now 1.2 gigs in size. Again, it's just because I've decided to go really big for printing purposes. You don't have to go that big. So now we can see we've got a whole lot of very, very precious little stars in between the bigger stars. 
Is it still too big? Maybe it is. I'm going to shrink it down again, holding shift, just to make them even more incidental. And then all I'm going to do is press Alt and duplicate the black background in the back. I'm going to take this, Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it. Let's make sure we've done that. Control A, Control C, and then Control V just to paste it. And then, of course, all my other layers are going to cause grief for me because that's how it works when you're doing a tutorial. So I'm going to grab, as that could get very irritating, I'm going to lock the black space. I can come back here so I can, hey, you're locked. Why did you still move? It's very strange. All right, now I'm going to position my stars here. And I can overlap them. It doesn't really matter. It's very irritating. It's locked. It should not be accessible. Anyway. Oh, computer says no. That's irritating. All right, so I'm pressing the Alt key here, and I'm trying to hit a star cluster, but it's not working. So we'll have to carry on pasting stars ad infinitum, because apparently that's what the computer wants to do. Now, the whole point of this exercise, I'm not going to make you sit here and suffer through my inability to select layers and move them around. Oh, that is fun. Is you want to position them so that, yes, there is a certain amount of overlap um, to kind of create differences. What you can do is you can rotate those stars around so that the same patterns aren't repeated. Um, and effectively, you want to build up your own little star cluster, just pressing Control V every time. I'm using the arrow keys now because it won't allow me to select specific layers that I want to uh, select. So I'm going to just do this quickly, bring this down here. And again, it's not necessarily about filling the space. It's just about making it a bit more interesting and trying to avoid obvious patterns of reproduction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these layers, hold shift, press control E to turn them all into one layer, control A to select the whole thing, control C to copy it, control V to paste it. So now I've got a much bigger option and I can grab it and again, rotate it around so that it's not the same repeated pattern here and there. Move it out to here somewhere. And I'm not worried that it's going off the page, by the way. Um, they really are just decor in the background. And you're going to see how we use that in a little bit. Thank you. Okay, enough of that. Again, it's about selecting all of those layers, converting them into one. Okay, so I've still got my star layer and my home world layer. Now, it's not very clear necessarily the difference between the stars, the big stars and the little stars on this scale. But when I zoom in, it starts to become a little bit more apparent between our clusters of bigger stars and smaller stars. Still not 100% fantastic, but we haven't got to the final product yet. We're now going to call these small stars they're little stars and now we're going to go in and we're going to go back to black and white we're going to select our marker tool again we're going to choose a size that's appropriate for this uh, and we're going to choose a sphere because you'll see now why it doesn't really matter maybe yeah about that big okay now the important thing here is i'm changing the opacity to about 40 percent or so and all i'm going to do is now i'm going to go in and draw over these stars and create areas where if I stroke over it a couple times, I'm starting to make them scraggly. I'm starting to hide them out a little bit, thin them out, create sort of spaces. If I want, I can bring back this blackness and uh, the, the empire layout and just follow the course of those dark areas. This is just to create a subtle differentiation. And because it's at 40%, when I stroke over it, I'm knocking out 40% of that brightness. And if I go over it again, that's 80% of the brightness gone. So it really allows me to craft, if you like, 
um, a shape out of these background stars to make them feel as if they're not really there. And you want to create some interesting spaces to really highlight the void between the stars, if you like. And you can actually create black hole spaces. All right, so I'm going to hide that again so we go back to our space. Now, that looks very constructed, in my opinion. It looks very, okay, we don't want them to go there or we want to separate that out or um, we want to create this sense of whatever. So what you're then going to do is you're going to take this layer and you are going to Gaussian blur it. That's our friend in this tutorial. And what you want to do is get it to the point where these no longer look like they're hard and fast lines. They literally look like they are gaps in space. So if I push it really, really hard, I think, yeah, that to me looks about right. We've got a little bit of little bit of detailing happening in there, but not a lot. We've still got this interesting shape happening. So I'm going to do that. Say OK. Right. Now, Control E merges it with the stars below. There we go. So now we've got a very interesting small stars background. And if I zoom in, we've got a lot more difference now happening with our main stars in our main areas anyway. And again, if we feel that that's still too strong, drop the opacity. Look at that, 50%, and now our stars are bursting through. And maybe leave it at about 70, 78, 79, 82, somewhere around there. So we really get this amazing sense of depth almost happening. Now, the last thing that we can do to those small stars, and this is where I always advocate, before you do a blurring effect, duplicate the layer. Don't delete the layer duplicate the layer, hide this bottom, hide this little layer here. And I also, there's something that's happening that's causing a separation not to be so profound, is that our home world stars should be on top, and our main stars should be on the top as well. Otherwise, they're being masked by these stars in the background. So really, we've got quite a lot of popping going on. But if I want to create a sense of depth, again, blur, Gaussian blur, not at the 300 pixel percent here, but maybe at just enough to soften out those stars. So, oop, 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 I've got to give my computer time to calculate it. There we go, 8%, maybe too much. Yeah, something like that could work. Now we can possibly push this back up to 100%. There we go. Good. Do we want the other stars underneath? Nah, I think it's fine. So I'm going to delete them. Okay, so pulling all the way out, there is our galaxy star map. And that is, I think, looking quite, quite spectacular. You can play around with the different levels as you so choose, but um, ultimately it's up to you artistically. So that ends part one of how to draw a galaxy map. I hope you found this useful. Part two is where we now start to move in and define those galaxies. Look at how interesting that's already starting to look just with some color into it. We're going to start looking at how do you add in details to make your space map that much more interesting, as well as how to define empires, shipping lanes, naming conventions, how to create it so that it looks like a good science fiction map and not just something that you banged out over a period of several hours. And uh, it will hopefully lead you on a path to creating the ultimate sci-fi game and being master of your game. So until next time, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you want to see more of this, of course, leave us comments below. Tell me whether you want to see me going through the creation of the alien species in a video as well, because I personally think that's useful, but maybe sci-fi is not your bag. Maybe you are a hardcore fantasy uh, player and... Uh, so let me know so that I know what I can do for you. Until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of gaming.